Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. And we start with breaking news right now out of Hamtramck. After hours of debate and hearing from residents, City Council makes a decision on displaying pride flags on city property. In fact, just within the last 10 minutes, City Council amended a resolution that would ban the pride flag from being flown on city-owned property. It's good to have you with us here at 11. I'm Devin Skillian. And I'm Christy McDonald. And for Kimberly Gill tonight, Jacqueline Francis is there live with just how we got to this point. Jacqueline. Yeah, that meeting is still going on right inside that door, and that vote came down just minutes ago. As you said, the council voting unanimously to approve the resolution. Take a look at the vote. Councilman Rafai. Yes. Councilman Mahmoud. Yes. Mr. Mayor, resolution 23. <laughs> and that vote coming after hours of contentious debate. We will have the world in two straight miles, so it's a little bit, uh, it's covert, so it's not right on the nose. Big displays of public disapproval for the proposed resolution, oh. followed by a very public display of affection. I'm all for removing the gay pride flag, because you know what, let me tell you something, this is America. I have the right to say I'm against the gay pride flag. If anyone has an issue with it, they could go kick rocks. The resolution proposed by Mayor Pro Tem Mohammed Hassan states the city will not allow any religious, ethnic, racial, political, or sexual orientation group flags to be flown on the city's public property. The only flags allowed would be the American state and city flags, along with other nation flags and the prisoner of war flag. I relocated from California to Hamtramck. That's really far away. And I did it because I thought it was a diverse community. You don't see my family sitting there putting the flag and say, you're I'm going to put the Lebanese flag down your throat. You keep your flag, you want to put it at your house, put it at your house. Do not put it on city property and do not put it in our schools. Yes, sir. Nice and simple. Before voting to approve the resolution, the council members and the mayor made comments of their own, saying that this is not about targeting one specific group, adding that if you let one flag in, you'd have to let all the flags in. Reporting live from Hamtramck, Jacqueline Francis, Local 4. All right, Jacqueline, thank you. The cousin of Zion Foster facing charges tonight in connection with her murder. Jalen Brazier was arraigned this afternoon on several charges. The 17-year-old teenager from East Point disappeared January of last year. Prosecutors say Brazier told police he threw her body in a dumpster when she stopped breathing as they smoked marijuana. Zion's body, though, has never been found. Brazier served time for lying to police, but now charged with first-degree murder and tampering with evidence. Former President Donald Trump taking his defense directly to the American people after pleading not guilty to federal criminal charges. He is speaking tonight at a fundraiser in New Jersey as the political fallout intensifies here. Alice Barr is on Capitol Hill tonight with the details for us. Back on friendly ground after his day in federal court, former President Trump tonight defiant. Today we witness the most evil and heinous abuse of power in the history of our country. Earlier today in Miami, he pleaded not guilty to a 37-count indictment, alleging he stored highly classified national security documents haphazardly around Mar-a-Lago, showed them to people twice, and concealed them from investigators. The former president shifting attention to President Biden's ongoing classified documents investigation. Never before have the two standards of justice in our country been more starkly revealed. Republican lawmakers largely echoing that claim. Politically is seen as a double standard. Though legal analysts stress that unlike Mr. Biden, Mr. Trump is accused of obstructing efforts to get the documents back. Some Republicans are now voicing concerns from Capitol Hill. What President Trump did was wrong. I mean, it's clear as day. To the campaign trail. There are people in my own party who are blaming DOJ. How about blame him? He did it. The first federal indictment of a former U.S. president and 2024 GOP frontrunner now sending shockwaves through the race for the White House.
The Trump event tonight was also a fundraiser, and the campaign sent out fundraising blasts as he was heading in and out of the courtroom, trying to turn the former president's legal peril to his political advantage. In Washington, Alice Barr, NBC News. With the demolition of the Detroit incinerator over the weekend, new life for that property is actually already underway. And it's going to give Detroit's abandoned animals a better shot at life. Our Mara McDonald live tonight on Detroit's east side. What was once the offices for the incinerator are now going to house the new improved Detroit animal care and control, Mara. Devin, that's right. And anybody who has ever been to the current facility knows how really awful it is and that's not an overstatement now there's new life for this building and we're getting a first look let me take you inside what you're looking at the removal of this thick layer of concrete means the city's new animal care and control will have the upgraded drainage necessary to house 200 dogs if need be and a brand spanking new vet facility as well as isolation area for sick animals always a big lift whenever you're undertaking a renovation project because the thought you know the plan is oh yeah we'll be able to do x y and z and but you don't know what's behind the walls right and so the minute we start to open things up you're like yeah we weren't pretty planning on having mummies in the wall or anything like that or COVID, or supply chain issues, or any of the myriad things which have made this a challenge. Counts and her people have persevered, and more than that, they care deeply. What really keeps me going is seeing the end result. Both Counts and Bautista know what a dungeon the current animal care facility is. It's old, decrepit, and the smell of it is vomit-inducing. By rehabbing the incinerator property, the first upgrade is the space. We'll have new flooring, new ceiling, new LED lights throughout. What's just on the horizon is clean, light, bright, and welcoming. And not just upgraded space for the animals, but the staff and volunteers who do so much. This facility will be a game changer, and they know it. It's a certain sense of pride where you've got to show up and show out for your community because they know that it's a direct reflection of you I mean, you're a direct reflection of the community. Back here live after years of trying to get this off of the ground, it's actually happening. The hope is that all those animals that are currently housed over at the other facility off of the Chrysler, they're going to be in here by Christmas. We're live on Detroit's East Side tonight. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. Yeah, it's going to be really something to watch take shape. All right, Mara. High school students across the state will be required to take a financial literacy class in order to graduate. It will start this fall with eighth graders. Today, the State Board of Education discussed approval of the standards for the new half-credit personal finance course. The Michigan Department of Education recommended inserting standards for personal finance into an existing economics course. It comes after the law was passed last year with bipartisan support. Detroit businesses that don't accept cash could face fines under a new ordinance passed by city council today. The cashless business ordinance requires all city businesses to accept cash as payment for food, drinks, goods, services. It goes into effect in 90 days. We should note there is no federal law requiring businesses to accept cash. But Detroit now joins Philadelphia, New York, New Jersey, and Massachusetts in having a cash ordinances, or ordinance, rather, and businesses that don't comply face a misdemeanor charge and a $500 fine. We had been asking for rain. We got a lot of it uh, in parts. It depended on where you were, but there's a lot of standing water around, and we had some rough things, too, hail and wind earlier. That's right. Let's get over to Kim Adams with a look at where things stand tonight, and can we expect more rain for the rest of the week, Kim? Uh, a little bit of rain left over tonight, but the heavy rain has come to an end across much of Metro Detroit, but still getting some decent showers down in Monroe and also Lenaway counties tonight. But the rest of Metro Detroit, other than just a few sprinkles out there, there's just not a whole lot going on. But Taylor's getting some light rain, Flat Rock. Uh, also down into Monroe, Gross Seal, Ecorse in downtown Detroit. Aside from a sprinkle here and there, things have started to dry out and we will continue to dry out for the day tomorrow. Right now, downtown Detroit, skies are mostly cloudy. We've got light drizzle, 58 degrees, 57 in Howell, 54 in Pontiac and upper 50s 
in Adrian. Tomorrow, well, it will dry out tomorrow and it will warm up and the sun will return as well. 58 in the morning, no problems for your morning commute, although there, there's still a little standing water here and there, but it shouldn't really cause any problems for that morning drive. 73 at noon, mid 70s by the time we reach 4 o'clock. Still a little bit below normal, but definitely headed in the right direction. We have one more chance of rain on Thursday and then a change to the Father's Day forecast you're going to want to stick around for.